Of course, we are keeping our eyes on the three caucuses that are happening today, Michigan, Missouri, and Idaho. And throughout our programming, we've brought you coverage showing you that Trump has dominated in Michigan and in Missouri. But we do have a breaking update here out of Idaho as well. This just coming down moments ago, Donald Trump also winning the Republican presidential caucuses in Idaho. That race came, that call for the race came at 5 o'clock Mountain, 7 o'clock Eastern. So we now know that Trump has dominated in all three of those caucuses today. We want to talk more about all of today's events and bring in Brian Sobel, who's the principal consultant for Sobel Communications and a political analyst. He joins us live now with more on this coverage and more of this discussion. Brian, thanks so much for being here. Thank you uh, for having me, Lexi. And uh, the Trump train appears to continue to roll at this hour. Yeah, and as I mentioned, the Idaho results just coming down about two minutes ago now, knowing that Trump dominated in Michigan, in Missouri, and also won Idaho as well today. What are your biggest takeaways, and are you surprised by anything here? No, not surprised by these uh, caucus results. And uh, a caucus is a caucus that people uh, gather. They have to show up in person. Uh, they have to listen to some speeches, and they are allowed to cast a vote. That's different than a primary. Uh, but having said that, uh, so far, uh, Trump has won everything. And so that makes Super Tuesday critically important for Nikki Haley. Well, and I want to ask you about that as well. A lot of people are probably still wondering why is Nikki Haley in the race? She's lost every state so far to the former president, but she has vowed to stay in it through at least Super Tuesday. So why do you think that she still is staying in it? Does she actually think that there is a chance for her to make some sort of comeback here? Well, at this point, her chances are probably slim and none. And as the old joke goes, slim is boarding the train. But saying that um, is is not yet uh, seeing what happens on Super Tuesday. If she can pick up a few states on Super Tuesday, uh, she may uh, well remain in the race. You think about the Republican delegate count. It takes 1,215 delegates to win the nomination on the Republican side of the ledger. Uh, Donald Trump now has uh, over 200. Uh, Nikki Haley has under 30. Um, but if she were to win, say, 50% of the states on Tuesday, and there's 15 states uh, in play and a territory, American Samoa, uh, maybe, maybe she can gain some momentum. Uh, I think if she is soundly defeated on Tuesday, uh, it's the end of the line for her. Yeah, we do have an updated delegate count here right now. Trump with 244 after today, Haley with 24, and of course the other two candidates dropped out already of this race. But a look at those numbers so far. And I want to ask you too, just reflecting on, on the three caucuses that happened today, which of these states were you most interested in following the results of? Well, I was interested uh, in Michigan, first and foremost. Uh, the other two smaller states, very conservative. Um, and so no surprises there. And, and frankly, all three uh, states were offering no real surprises. Uh, there was not a lot of contention by either candidate uh, on the Republican side in those states. So uh, that always tells me that uh, polling having been done, tells the candidates they need to put their resources other places. Uh, their media buys uh, have to go other places. And so uh, really today, not a, not a big surprise, but again, as we were saying just a moment ago, uh, Donald Trump is now uh, in a commanding lead with 244 delegates and Nikki Haley is, is well behind. Yeah, and I want to talk about Michigan, too. You're right. There's a lot of uh, interesting things to follow there, especially after the primary last week, the caucus today. And Michigan really was the last major primary state before Super Tuesday. So there was a lot to watch there. And there was a lot of conversation about people who voted uncommitted. So I want to ask you about that and how that might make things different as we look ahead to November and, and what that means, especially for the Biden campaign, seeing people who chose to go that direction. Well, with respect to the, uh, to the president, he has, uh, he has a lot of problems. Uh, he has uh, a lot of Democrats who are not happy with him. He has a lot of independents who um, tend to, uh, whatever their previous party was, Democrat, Republican, tend to lean in those directions. 
uh, overall and Republicans who are not going to vote for him. I think uh, this is going to be a very interesting next few weeks and months uh, before the convention, uh, where I think some Democrats quietly are going to be putting pressure on uh, Joe Biden uh, to drop out of the race. And uh, we will see, of course, uh, but history uh, has shown us in the past where uh, a leading candidate, for example, uh, Lyndon Baines Johnson, uh, dropped out of the race. So there is historical precedent for Joe Biden taking another decision. But we will see. Um, the, the fear by Democrats, of course, is that if they switch it up at this late date, that Donald Trump perhaps gets the inside track and, and can bring it home. But Donald Trump's problems, Lexi, are that he is not popular with a certain percentage of the Republican Party. And you can see the base is coming out in, in droves for him, uh, the base that supports Donald Trump. But there are a lot of other Republicans who, who don't see him as the answer. But their dilemma, their conundrum, is that Joe Biden is also not their answer. And this is one of these unique times in American history where you have two candidates that, um, for a lot of their own party, are not in in incredibly uh, popular. And so we're going to see a whole lot of interesting things as we move forward now. Yeah, very interesting, especially because we've heard so much of that, that people don't necessarily want a rematch, yet here we are, and that's exactly what it's looking like as we look ahead to November. And of course, this last week, there were a lot of different things to follow, a lot of very big events, significant events, but one that really stands out is that former President Trump and President Biden both went to pay a visit to the border, of course, in two very different locations. Trump was in Eagle Pass, Biden was in Brownsville. So that, of of course, is a very big topic, a very big area of concern for voters as we look ahead to November here. So uh, what other issues are you noticing amongst voters? What is standing out as some of the most pressing issues and how big was it to see both of these uh, individuals at the border on Thursday, especially with November really right around the corner, it feels like? Well, well starting with uh, both of them dueling at the uh, border. Um, we know it's sort of inside baseball, but uh, there's something called earned media. And this is where a, a politician goes someplace and they know that a whole lot of the media will follow them and, and do reports uh, about them being someplace. And so I think from the perspective of President Biden, he could not have avoided uh, the, the border if he knew Donald Trump was going to be there. So there's a lot of, uh, in campaigns, there's a lot of... Uh, a competition. They, you know, you're watching the other campaign for what they're doing, and you're trying to blunt their efforts and that sort of thing. Uh, immigration, to your question, immigration is absolutely huge this year, and it's going to matter for a lot of people what uh, both candidates are saying about immigration. But let's not forget, in American history, economy, the economy has always led the way, and so people are also going to think about: Are they better off the old line, right? Uh, are we better off than four years ago? And people look at it very seriously that way. You know, is inflation changing their lives? Is the, are the costs of gas, uh, gasoline, but, uh, but natural gas, uh, serving homes, and energy in general, and inflation, and the cost of a loaf of bread? Uh, all of these things matter when somebody goes to the polls, and they have to decide whether one candidate is a better candidate than the other one. And a lot of times, it can cross party lines. And it has in American history. Uh, but crime is also huge, especially inner city uh, crime. Uh, what's going on in Ukraine, in Israel? All of these issues are front and center for the American people. And frankly, they're front and center for uh, uh, President Biden and for former President Donald Trump. Yeah, a lot of very big points there. And I want to ask you, too, looking ahead to tomorrow, the D.C. primary, what are you expecting to see there? And does Haley have any chance yes. in coming out victorious <laughs> tomorrow night? I, I, I think there's a good chance that Nikki Haley takes the District of Columbia. Uh, it is a very progressive place, city, um, and it'll be interesting. But I, but I think that may be one that she, she snags. Um, and but uh, again, it's one of these things where it's almost a pure victory because it's it you know in, in the bigger scheme of things, uh, Donald Trump would say, "Hey, I won everything, and I really don't care about winning the District of Columbia, you know, the swamp." 
Yeah, very, uh, very interesting and great observations here. Brian, do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to share with our viewers here? There's been, it's, it can become confusing at times trying to follow all of the, the different races and uh, of course all of the different caucuses and primaries that are happening. So any other big takeaways that you'd like to share here with our viewers? Well, let's see, you put your finger on it. Every state has different rules. The caucuses, the primaries, uh, who is a bound delegate, who who can go and vote their conscience, as it were, and it varies state to state. And and it really, the, the, the backdrop of, of this is um, these arguments that go on in various states about uh, how you vote, when you vote, what you need to bring to vote. All these things go on state by state. So uh, for today, I, I think we can summarize it in in uh in saying that uh, donald trump has had a very good day it was caucuses not primaries but tuesday uh viewers should be uh looking very carefully at all of these states in american samoa uh to to really see whether donald trump uh brings down the final hammer on the uh, uh on the hopes of nikki haley who by the way is staying in uh also because this gives her a lot of opportunity to talk to the American people and to Republicans for 2028. Yeah, absolutely. Brian Sobel joining us here, political analyst, breaking down the results of all three caucuses today. And of course, as we look ahead to Super Tuesday, Brian, thanks so much for your time. We really appreciate it.